Hi, Larry. Uh, based on our discussion yesterday on the phone, I'm going to go through and show you three different measurements we're going to do with the 770 system. Uh, we're going to look at total luminous flux measurements, we're going to look at uh, radiant intensity measurements, and we're also going to look at radiance measurements. So to begin with, we're going to do the radiant intensity measurements and the total luminous flux measurements, both with the same input optic. Uh, we're going to use our, our six inch integrating sphere to do that, and we're configured right now for either irradiance radiant intensity measurement or total luminous flux measurement. I have a three millimeter measurement fiber, and also I have our 600 micron uh, internal reference lamp fiber. Uh, this is actually the fiber we discussed yesterday that, that dealt with recalibrating uh, the system for correcting for absorbance of your LED holders. So essentially what you would do is you would load your LED into the adapter, you would set the adapter onto your port, you would tighten down the three securing screws, hook up your power to your LED holder, and you would then move into the portion of the software that would, that would be entitled Total Luminous Flux. You'd go through a calibration and a measurement, and I'll show you that right now. Okay, so now we're going to move into the software portion of our demonstration, and we're going to look at Total Luminous Flux, which is contained under the LED uh, module here. Click on the LED and Total Luminous Flux. First thing we want to do is create a calibration file, so we go into Modify Settings calibrations and create cal file. I'm going to take uh, just a few scans here just for demonstration purposes. Also the internal reference lamp settling time should be about two minutes but again for demonstrations we'll just look at about five second uh, warm-up time. Standard file is loaded. Simply click on take a reading. The uh, countdown timer will count down for five seconds. It'll take five dark scans. As you can see here it's acquiring your dark scans. Then it'll go ahead and take five measurement scans. And this is a typical curve that you'll see uh, with our visible system. Now we click save, and we'll save that file as TLF. And we'll exit out of here, and we'll make sure that we have our calibration file loaded, which we do. And we'll click OK, and I'm going to leave the internal reference lamp on at this time. You can see it's noted here that the auxiliary lamp is on. And we're going to go ahead and take a measurement of that. And again, I'll take a measurement of five scans. We'll just click the play button. And we're now acquiring our five dark scans and our five measurement scans to, to average together. And that's a typical plot right here of, our, of, a, of a tungsten based lamp. And if we wanted to get the total luminous flux value, it would be in our value tree over here under spectral. And we have our TLF value is about 290 millilumens, which is typical for this lamp. And that's all there is to uh, taking a TLF measurement. Okay, now that we went through the total luminous flux portion, I'm going to move on to the radiant intensity portion of the demo. We're going to, like I said, we're going to use the exact same setup we did for total luminous flux, except what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the LED holder and adapter from the, from the sphere. We leave the same measurement fiber. I'll rotate the sphere around. So essentially what we need to do now is we're going to be looking at uh, a fluorescent lamp. What we need to do is essentially align the lamp both in the X and Y direction with the center line of the port. Again, leaving the same configuration we had before. You want to measure, because this is a radiant intensity measurement, you want to measure the distance correctly, very accurately from the, from the lamp to the port. And again, once this is all set up, you would move into the software portion and perform a spectral radiant intensity measurement. Then we'll move into that right now and I'll show you some screenshots. Okay, so now to take an irradiance measurement, we go to the source spectral analysis icon instead of the LED icon this time, and we pull down to spectral irradiance. Now I'm not going to do a calibration uh, as I did with TLF because it's identical to the TLF calibration, but I will check really quickly to see if we have our calibration file loaded. So go back to modify settings, calibrations, and we do in fact have the irradiance uh, file here loaded. I'll click OK. Again, I'm going to use the auxiliary lamp to measure. It's a, again the same tungsten source we used before. And average five scans, so I'll just click the play button. It's going to take your five dark scans, and it's going to take five measurement scans. And again, we're going to get the uh, same plot as we got before. It's the same lamp. Uh, we want to get our, our, uh, our value tree up over here. We look under spectral, we get our irradiance values. 
which is about two milliwatts per centimeter squared. We also get our, our illuminance values, uh, both in uh, lumens per centimeter squared and lumens per meter squared. So that's all there is to taking an irradiance measurement. Okay, now that we've performed the total luminous flux and the radiant intensity measurements, we'll move into the radiance measurements of that same lamp. Uh, we do not use the 6 inch sphere for this. Instead, what we're going to use is an imaging telescope. Now, this is, imaging telescope here is different than the one um, that you were quoted, but we don't have one in stock. So, for argument's sake, I'll just use this one here. It's the same, the same exact setup, just a different camera. So what you're going to do is you're going to basically set up your system with your lamp in a holder again. You're going to be looking through um, a focusing optic as opposed to using a CCD imaging telescope to align it. Um, but I'll move into the software and I'll show you some screenshots of what it would look like if you were to look through the imaging optic in the 730-9Q that you were quoted. And you would essentially line this put your dot on wherever you want to measure the radiance and move into the software. And uh, we'll do that right now, move into the software and show you exactly how you would perform the radiant, uh, sorry, the radiance measurement. Okay, now moving on to radiance, um, locating the application software is as easy as we did before for the TLF and for the irradiance, uh, we'd go to our source spectral tab, we would pull down to radiance and we would get up our measurement screen again. Uh, now, instead of going and doing a calibration and a measurement as we did in the past, uh, those are identical to TLF and irradiance. I'd like to just um, kind of concentrate on the alignment of the camera and what you would be seeing through the reflex telescope. Now, for convenience sake, we have a, uh, a, another version of uh, Pritchard Type Optics Design is an OL610 CCD imaging telescope, which allows us to view, actually, our alignment procedure um, by, way of a by way of a CCD monitor. And as you can see here on the screen, I'm looking at a, at a fluorescent lamp, and you can see the spirals. And the, the main thing I want to uh, point out here is that when you're looking through your reflex telescope, this is essentially what you're going to be seeing. Um, not exactly, but the black spot you see in the middle of the screen is actually the portion of the, of the sample that's being measured. And you want to have that spot completely overfilled with your sample. So in other words, you would not want to have your sample somewhere over here. Uh, your spot would not be overfilled and you would not be getting accurate measurements. So essentially what you want to do is move your spot to where it's completely overfilled and I'll move this out of the way and I'll take a measurement very quickly here. You can see we're at a 33 millisecond integration time so we're able to take 20 scans very very quickly. And there's a there's a sample scan, now this is not a calibrated scan it is calibrated for wavelength but not for intensity. Um, and that's essentially all there is to taking uh, measurements with our OL770 spectroradiometer. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to doing uh, total luminous flux, radiant intensity, and radiance measurements.